Okay, welcome to the Bears Gym today for our study in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 22. After we finish this chapter, you'll probably say to yourselves, man, a couple of these gentlemen deserve a nice hot spot in hell. They deserve to be cast out into the lake of fire. And I would probably agree with you. Quite frankly, many of us deserve a hot place in hell. To be cast out to the outer darkness. And many of us Give thanks to God for his mercy and his loving kindness. Am I right? Now perhaps we haven't been involved in murders and brutal wickedness against innocent people. Very interesting with God. He views a liar just as bad as a murderer. Adultery was a capital punishment crime, just like murder. Kidnapping was a capital punishment crime. Sodom and Gomorrah was a capital punishment crime. Blaspheming the name of God was a capital punishment crime. So yeah. I would say many of us can be very thankful to God for his loving kindness and his mercy. And with that, let us move on. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and his father's house heard of it, they went down thither unto him. Every one that was in distress, every one that was in debt, every one that was discontented. They were very sad of the, the prime minister, the king, the president, the, their, their uh, regime that was in at this place in time. There was a time in a country, our country, a few years ago when the big O was in office and there was, it was like the land was given over to debauchery and Sodom and Gomorrah and lawlessness and the whole godless of, how can this be? How could this be happening? I don't know about you, but I was, my stomach was grieved for that eight years of that man was in the White House caused constant immoral Laws and statutes and godless rulings. And it, was, it was brutal to the Christians. It, Christianity was in mourning over the whole time that person was in office. Right now we have a very good president. And we're very, very proud of him. Right here in the year of 2019, A.D. Anno Domini. Very proud and grateful for our good president. But in this time, they were stuck with a, they were figured to, let's put it, they were stuck with a big O, you know, during their this time. And it was just a, a wicked rule over the land. And, and people were, were suffering spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially because of it. So they gathered themselves unto David, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Small, a small entourage, a small army. You could view that as like a, a small military company, small Marine Corps series, perhaps. Notable, mentionable, but not really the, the power and might of an entire army. Nonetheless, that's what David had. 
And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father, my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. So Moab was tentative enemy of Israel, but for David, they were, they were a, a delicate balance of a friend for this time and place in history. So he brought his parents before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him the entire time David was on the run, shall we say. The prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. And David departed and came into the forest of Hereth. A forest is a great place to hide. You can just you can bury yourself in the trees and the woods and and unbeknownst to people that are looking for you. It's just very hard to find people in the woods. It's just it's just hard. When Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that were with him, now abode in Gabeah under a tree in Ramah, having a spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds? In other words, he's saying, Can David give you all these great gifts that I'm giving you? So Saul is using his... His gifts is like bribery to control. That's why the Bible says that a righteous man should shun bribes and and uh, how they say in our country, these guys that travel around and, and pay off politicians to sway the vote on certain bills and legislation to fill their pockets. But and they but they say there's some great political reason why I'm voting against this. But really, they're just getting their pockets filled. And so Saul's putting the heat on these guys, says, hey, who's filling your pockets? And you have conspired against me yet. There is none that shows me where my son has made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me and showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servants against me to lie in wait as it is this day. Now, earlier you'll remember this Doeg. You'll notice that not many people name their kids Doeg. It's like naming them Judas. Judas is scary. Judas priest. It's like a curse to God. But Doeg pip pipes up nonetheless. He was an Edomite. And he was set over a certain bunch of Saul's affairs. And he peeped up and he said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. So Doeg kind of wormed out information that was going to harm a lot of people. Then the king said to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests, and all that were with him in Nam. Now these were all righteous men, godly and righteous men, part of the priesthood. And they came unto the king. Saul said, Hear now, you son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. Saul said unto him, Why have you conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, that thou hast given unto my enemy bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie and wait as it is this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, Who is so faithful among all the servants of David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth all by bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto the servant, nor to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this less or more. The king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. The king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, 
because their hand also was with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not lend forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. Those were good men. Those knew right and wrong. Then the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned. He fell upon the priests and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. He basically killed 85 plus godly men in the land of Israel. They were like, they were like prophets, teachers, preachers, counselors of the Lord. And they, they, they slew them in cold blood. And on top of that, then they go to the city. And we continue the story in verse 19. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, and he killed all the men, all their women, all the children, all the animals, everything with the sword. It's like, are you kidding me? Your hatred, your guile, your bitterness, your jealousy? You're going to massacre all these innocent people? That's Saul. Saul and Doig. Like I said, these, these two guys, they do deserve a nice hot spot in the pits of hell. And you would probably agree. What it finally turned out to be, we're not quite sure. We'll find out one day. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. David said unto Abiathar, I knew that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul. And I have questioned the death by myself upon my own conscience, that they are dead on behalf of me. Abide thou now with me, fear not, for he seeketh my life, seeketh your life. But with me thou shalt be safe. In other words, David feels responsible, but David didn't kill him. Saul killed him. So it's unfortunate. Um, kind of like when a commander sends out his troops to the battle and the troops get killed. It wasn't even the commander that sent them out. It was the evil ones that started the war. They're the ones that created this scenario. And, and unfortunately, sacrifices are made in war. But the commander-in-chief has to do their job. And David did what was right. He could have rose up and killed Saul. He could have done it. He had the ability, but he didn't want to slay whom God put in office. He had mercy. And sometimes courage is not who you kill. Courage is sometimes who you have mercy on. But capital punishment and that process of the state, that must go on. But as kings, which David was a king to be, Saul was a king, they had kind of law was kind of in their own hands. So this is kind of a brutal story. A lot of innocent people were struck down. And um, sad. All we can do is kind of leave that sad. And uh, I'll leave you with this one note. In the midst of sadness, when a righteous man is killed, whether it be old age, unfortunate accident, or being executed, massacred by an evil guy like Saul. When a righteous man dies, he goes to paradise. Children, righteous parents, they go on to paradise, to the promised land, to heaven, to be with the Lord. In this day and age, you go into being the, with the presence of the Lord, Paul said. And that day they had paradise. And the wicked went to the lake of fire. So basically Saul just hurried up this righteous city and this righteous group of people to paradise. So with the sadness, basically they're now in their eternal reward. And they got to start it and enjoy it early. So if you have a loved one that goes in your eyes soon, early, so forth. Just realize they simply passed into eternity to begin pleasures forever with the Lord early. But 
in God's eyes, not early, right on time. God bless you, friends. See you next time.